Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. Hey, so I pulled, like, the ultimate good. Oh, the other what, day. Is, what does that mean? Um, so, you, you will... You will know what that means when when I get there to the end. Okay. I'm excited. Um, <laughs> well, no, it's it's actually. I think you might be proud. You might be a proud dude. I'm not, sure. <laughs> I'm not really sure. The uh, the so at the fire department, I one of the responsibilities and roles I have is like so. For one, when we get done with every call, you have to do a report on the call. And the annoying thing is you have to do this report in the in this other computer system. Even if it's like an EMS call and you have to write an actual EMS report, you still have to write this other report as well in this other computer system that you can only access from the station. So it's kind of annoying in the aspect of it's like redundant crap that you have to do. Yeah. But either it has to be done. And for a couple years, I have been tasked with being one of the people at the station who I, I do what's called the overdue reports list. So I run this this list of all the reports that did not get done. So there's basically a call, but there's not the completed report. And I compare that against our book that you have to fill out of who was responsible for that report and who didn't do the report that they're supposed to do. Okay. And it's really funny because... It really is a book. There is still, quote unquote, a legal document as written by policy for our fire corporation through Montgomery County, Maryland. The legal document is writing each call in this book log, even though it's a whole like electronic system with its own reporting system at all. The legal source of truth is still this written log book. <laughs> okay. It's the dumbest thing in the world. It, 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 that's yeah. just, it's terrible and stupid, but whatever. So either way, when I'm writing, doing this overdue report list, the only re reason I can know who it is that is responsible for a report that didn't get done is because I look in the logbook and, for one, look at the entry that somebody was supposed to make when they got back to the station for that call and who was responsible for it, written down in this book. Or if somebody didn't write down the call, I look at the official log, because it's still a written log of sign-in and sign-out stuff, that's, like I said, the legal source of truth, according to the way the policies are written, of who was writing the position that theoretically should have been responsible for that that call. So, people are really bad about writing in the book all the calls when they come back from a call, because for one, we live in a culture where I shouldn't have to do all this manual work, and for two, people are lazy. Well, it seems kind of stupid to have to write oh, shit in a book anyway. It's absolutely stupid however it is still the official policy and the official right, like, what is supposed right. to be done so from my perspective i get this report from the computer that says these are all the like the calls that went out and the reports that have not been completed so then i have to compare this against something to know who do i who is supposed to be responsible for this so i can create the overdue reports list and i've been doing this list for a couple of years now not only lately, is there is there people that are always like they like this guy that always fucking absolutely. never puts a shit. There's like one guy who rides the most. He rides like three or four shifts a week as an officer, and it's always the officers who are responsible for the reports. And he ne excuse me, never does his reports on time. He always do waits like two or three weeks to do his reports, so his name's always on the list like 15 or 16 times every <laughs> week or two weeks when I get the report done. Um, so the fire chief always gets mad at him, and he only gets mad at him because the county comes down on why are there so many overdue reports from this station uh, type of deal. It's, it's like I said, it's right. a very dumb system. But either way, so I did the overdue reports list on um, on last night, Monday night, and I hadn't done it in a couple of weeks because I'd been busy when I was there and just never got around to it. So it's been about a month since I did the overdue reports list. And, of course, the same guy is on the overdue reports list like 15 times. He knows he's going to be on there. He'll eventually get his reports done. But there's a couple people who are on this list who aren't usually on it. They're usually pretty good about doing their reports. Now, the other problem with the overdue reports list is if somebody writes in the book incorrectly who was supposed to be responsible for that report, because sometimes you'll have the probationary members like be responsible for the book, and they'll write down who they thought was the officer of the unit, but they'll be wrong. <laughs> It happens all the time. It's it's amazing how often it happens because, you know, for one, it's a confusing system. And when you have, like, an 18-year-old kid who's new to the fire department, 
they look at especially like they'll look at me as the shift officer and assume that I'm responsible for any time the engine goes out. Even if I'm driving that day, I'm not the officer of the, the, the unit. But they'll write my name next to it a lot because they're like, oh, it's my shift officer. He's on the engine. He's obviously responsible for the engine reports. And really, it's yeah. the officer of the unit. So it happens all the time. So this one guy, he's a cocky son of a bitch, but he's a good guy. I get along with him, but he's he always thinks he is better than everybody, and I always like if you make a mistake, he will call you out on that mistake. Basically, like he's never made a mistake in his life. Okay. I put his name on the reports list yesterday because he had a report that, according to the book, he was the officer of the unit. He is an engine officer. Um, he usually drives, but he also rises the officer. His name was next to it in this report book. And so I put his name on it because as far as I know, it wasn't a day that I ride. I have no idea like what you did on a day that I wasn't there. So I just, right. my, my basis is I put it on there. So I put his name on it, send the report list out. You know, there's like 50 reports due. He's one of the reports. He immediately emails me and says, yo, Blah, blah, blah street. You just give me the name of the like the street the call was on. He's like, it wasn't me. I wasn't in the seat. I was driving. It was this person. So I just wrote him back and I said, look. I said, uh, all I do, I've told you this before, all I do is go by what the book says. Your name's on it in the book. Your name's on it in the report list until that report gets done. He writes me back this long email like bitching at me about how that's bullshit he's not going to be responsible for doing this report and <laughs> just going on and on about like how it's bullshit and it's it's not Wouldn't it have been faster just to do the report than write this long ass email well it could have been or just to talk to your officer and say hey this is your report uh or yeah. just change it in the book next time you're on ship just cross out your name and write the actual officer's name on it because that happens all the time you know people make a mistake in the book cross it out initial it write the real like person's name on it everybody on my ship was giving me like it was like oh my god quit encouraging him quit egging him on because i was cracking up when i was reading these emails his email as it was coming in real time like the full st first one i was just like ha like he's already all upset and i was like i'm just gonna very quick tell him you know i basically don't care if your name was out in the, re the book do it up and then he just went out with his bitching email complaining and i was cracking up while i was reading it <laughs> you know what my response back to that was what Remember, I pulled the good. Okay. I don't know what this means, though. I don't know what this means. All I said to him was, cool story, okay. bro. Said. Oh, cool story, bro. <laughs> I, what did he say to that? I never felt so proud in my life. He never did he he didn't respond. <laughs> did not respond. I guarantee I was waiting for my phone to blow up because this guy, he's like a, you know, he, he's early 20s. Like I said, very cocky individual. Like I've talked to him. Uh -huh multiple times i guarantee he was fuming when he saw this thing <laughs> he was probably just trying to figure out how not to because because i outrank him at the fire department too so you know you can't really stop you can't step up to an officer that outranks you it's uh you know it's it's not it, it's a paramilitary organization rank means something in the fire department so if he was like stepping up to me in any other way that, that, that's a it, it could get him in a lot of trouble essentially just because that's the way that the rankings work. I guarantee he was fuming so hardcore. And I guarantee he probably, because he's on shift tonight, I guarantee he just did that report himself. <laughs> uh, you think but, he actually did it, or he did the whole... Uh, I, I'll, have right find, this? I'll have to find out when I'm there next week. I have no idea. But I just remember sitting there trying to think, what can I respond that's going to show him that I don't give a fuck what he keeps responding back to me? Like, what excuse <laughs> he's making... Wow, uh, that's a very good response. Like, and I was just like, "Oh man, I remember that story that Good told that one time about that about that dude." And I don't even remember what your story was about. But I don't either. I'm trying to remember when I've used this it, line. It was some like tech support story when you were doing tech support at your oh, house, and one guy was man. going insane, and he just kept <laughs> going crazy on you, and you finally got fed up with it and just wrote him back and said, "Cool story, bro." <laughs> and that was his like, yeah. I told a guy to suck my dick one time as a customer support as well. That didn't go well. That was also when I ran, ran my own business. Did, did he just like use his teeth or something? Or <laughs> uh, I don't even remember what happened after that. I'm pretty sure he canceled his account, which was preferable. So I can't. You can't say it didn't go well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Got exactly what you wanted out of it. <laughs> 
yeah, back when I did that, people didn't realize that they only they were paying like most of the customers were just like standard hosting customers, so they were paying ten dollars a month. And there's just a limit on what that ten dollars gets you. Ten dollars a month. And how much could they host? I don't remember now. I mean this was back in the early days of hosting, so it wasn't it wasn't a ton. Um I think it was like five hundred megs or something like that. It wasn't a lot. Um there was a bandwidth limit even. So yeah, this. But it was these, it was those pre-built websites that I was selling. So a lot of times they were asking questions about that type of stuff. Um, but I'm I don't remember what this guy was on about. But he had just he'd been back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and it finally I was just like, you're you're not worth my ten dollars. <laughs> Your ten dollars is not paying for me to deal with this amount of heartache. I started another cobble chest down at the very end of everything. By the way, yeah, I definitely used it. I always wonder, because I still, it's funny, I still have hosting, <coughs> excuse me, any like, remember when we did maps together that I would host, and even though they would get yeah. laggy as hell, I still own three hosting servers through this company, I mean, they're they're shared servers, but because they were so ridiculously cheap, and I'm not even talking $10 right. a month, I'm talking like $30 for three years, I remember, yeah. That these things yeah. are. And I still host, you know, random stuff on that. But I don't think I could ever host a website on that. It's so unreliable to right. actually important. <laughs> It'd be down half the time. Oh, God. It would be down. And, and like, my servers, like, the, the thing I dislike about this company is because it's a, uh, and granted, they're, it's, I, I'm probably definitely not worth their time, which I'm surprised they've let me stick around for so long with some of the, uh, the tickets that I've opened up with them, but they've shut me down on multiple occasions and just basically canceled my my service for violating the terms of service because they said I was trying to use these servers as like um, hosting hosting viruses and hosting you know propagating worms and things like that because out of nowhere my bandwidth would shoot up from you know essentially zero megs a month to five terabytes in a day. And my servers would actually be completely shut down. Like, even during the time frame, they, they even have logs that show that my servers haven't been online in, you know, four weeks. But they would still blame me for it because it came from my IP address somehow. Basically, their security was terrible, and they kept getting, you know, you know, right. IP addresses, like, uh, uh, utilized, and other people on the hosting service were getting shit wrong so i somehow got it reversed every time after a big fight because of the fact i think it was pretty easy to prove that it wasn't me but i'm surprised they didn't just be like you know fuck you we're canceling your account it's, <laughs> right it's we're over done with you because they don't even offer this stuff anymore now that i get emails from this company all the time when they're offering their sales and their sales are for basically what i have now for five dollars a month huh and i'm paying wow. like thirty dollars for three years <laughs> I'm surprised they haven't like gone through and gotten rid of all of those oh, accounts. I'm honestly, absolutely surprised. I just don't think they want to probably because I think the company's been bought out by like five different solutions at this point. I just yeah. don't think they want to go through the hassle of of dealing with it. And I'm really not what you call a power user. It's not like I'm abusing their system. <laughs> I, I run a Minecraft server on it, <laughs> and most of the time, my shit is my my servers are offline because I don't host maps very often. Yeah. So. I think they look at me as probably like besides when they get these decisions that I'm all of a sudden using terabytes of their bandwidth a month, which is completely untrue. They realize that I very rarely am using the service. <laughs> Not worth the fight. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know how companies can stay in business deal, deal with some of those things that they give out, Oops. and like afford to pay their employees to deal with. The customers for what they're paying, basically. Well, I mean, it could be a very well a, a mom and pop shop, just like you had running. That yeah, you know, there is no employees to pay, and you know, nine out of twelve months, I there's absolutely zero issues I have with my account, and it's literally just you know, so a couple right. dollars that you're making for doing nothing. That's true. That's true. Yeah, I don't know how many how many customers did you guys have at a. Uh, like at a time, at our peak, we right had over a thousand. And you, it was just you and the, you and the wife running this place. Yeah, yeah. And all she did was the billing stuff. She didn't actually interact with customers. But so they, if, if they were even paying five dollars a month, that's you know a thousand or five thousand dollars a month right. that you're making at your at your peak time for probably for the most part not doing much for that, like nine hundred ninety of those customers. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, for the most part, it was it wasn't bad. Um, but there were days. I think I think what it became is I just became overwhelmed with. It was like the probably the same the people that deal with post office work go through where there's just it's never ending. Every day I wake up and there's new tickets and there's new people wanting to ask stupid questions and <laughs> eventually I'm just like I don't want to talk to any of you ever again. I don't care how much you're paying. Oh, I will tell you. I don't know why lately, but I think people are getting dumber when they're asking for help because I have gotten so many emails from people saying at my work saying, "Jeff, I'm having a problem with, you know, you know, what they'll call our our electronic health record application. Can you help?" And my response to them is, "What problem are you having?" I have to ask. I don't know why you feel even telling me that you're having a problem when you don't tell me anything about the problem problem is is acceptable by any stretch of the imagination (laughs) but there's been such an influx of that over the past month even to the point where when i told somebody i was like what problem are you having and their response was i can't describe it call me <laughs> well, how the fuck did they describe that's, it when you uh, called them? I, I, I don't know. You can't describe it by an email. For one, the nice thing about email is you can put give me a screenshot via email, and most of these people know how to do screenshots because we've really like put out a lot of information on how to do screenshots because sometimes a picture is worth a thousand words, you know. So these are coming from people that I know have sent me screenshots in the past, and I know <laughs> have the ability to do that, but they somehow can't articulate themselves at all even when prodded to articulate themselves on something and i don't know what's going on with people's minds <laughs> and it's, it's even like the the ones that drive me even more insane i think are because sometimes i will actually get a hold of somebody and i'll finally i'll call them and be like okay what's going on and they'll say something and i'll be like you know what i would not have had any idea how to describe that either let me just come into your unit and see it because there's something really messed up going on so that does happen where they were basically absolutely right, but I don't realize that they're right until I, you know, go right. watch it in action. But a lot of times, it I either call them finally. Uh, I can't say finally because it's not like I put it off. But I'll call them and I'll get the oh blah blah blah. Somebody else help me fix it. Sorry. Aren't you not tech support anyway? I'm not. I'm not. But people, the nurse nurses do not understand the difference between IT and nursing informatics, and I have come to grips with that. I have understood the fact that I am their liaison to the people that really need to help them. And 90% of the problems that I solve for people are just guiding them to the people who are supposed to solve their problems. Uh, Yeah, I I have definitely come to grips with that. We actually have been interviewing. We have another position open in my department. And one of the things I keep telling people when they... uh, when they hire, because we'll have a lot of new informaticists who haven't officially worked as an informaticist before that we're getting through. And I was like, just so you know, you know, they'll be like, what is a typical, you know, day like for your, you know, in your department? And I'll say, you know, just so you know, you will lose the, the face of being nursing informatics to people. You gain the face of being IT and tech support to people. Whether it's a problem that you can fix or not, people will constantly ask you, about their broken keyboard or their broken mouse, even though that has nothing to do with what we do. Uh, I said you have to just accept the fact that we've you become a liaison to IT, which is kind of accurate in what we should be doing, but, I mean, people really don't understand. Yeah, Yeah, just like you said, it is not at all what we do, but everybody thinks that's exactly what we do. I just know you've so. bitched to me enough about it that... I don't know. I was kind of surprised to hear you saying that uh, you basically do a tech support. Oh, like, I, job. Well, and then the, and then it comes to a real problem because when somebody has a clinical issue, it's sometimes hard for them to differentiate if it's a clinical issue or if it's an application issue. So it really does cross this gray area on whose area is this actually to resolve, and I often have to make that call. Um, mm-hmm. So I get it, from, and that's why I said I've, I've accepted it and moved on with life because I get it from the nurse's perspective. They don't necessarily know who is responsible for what types of issues. But in my opinion, some are way more obvious than others. But we've just accepted the fact that if you call me and tell me your mouse is broken, I will get you to the right IT person that can get you a new mouse. <laughs> you know. But you your need Amazon to give me thing. information. At least those it. people tell me, Jeff, my mouse is broken. Can you help me? I know exactly how to respond to that email. Not, Jeff, I'm having a problem. Help me. Well, what the fuck is your problem? Or I can't help you. (laughs) Uh, 
your Amazon thing, they did finally give that refund, right? I yes, remember. they did. Thank God, because they, like I said, they originally denied it, but yeah. then they opened it back up. Why do you have an issue you need to resolve? No, no, I don't have. I've never had an Amazon issue actually that I can that I can think of. I did. I well, I did order something, and I I only got like I ordered um this uh, carpet uh cleaning thing, and I was and I also ordered two bottles of cleaning fluid to go in it and i only got one and the hassle of oh, no, trying oh, to figure no, out how oh, to oh no oh no I, re- <laughs> I, I i was just fighting two random skeletons and didn't think about the fact that i do not have my shield anymore because i died and lost all my stuff and i'm on my backup gear so i was like mm-hmm. right clicking thinking i'm blocking and like why am i getting hit through my shield oh i don't <laughs> even have a shield <laughs> uh but yeah, basically, I just gave up. I didn't. It, it seemed too hard to figure out how to because it was like either return the item. Like I couldn't figure out a oh, way to just basically it, tell them. It is so buried to get to anything on Amazon anymore. Like there's not an easy way to get to customer support and chat or a number to call. There's not an easy way. And if you look up any anything on what do I do if I get a package stolen, the first thing people say is get on a, an Amazon chat. It is so freaking hard to find out how to do an Amazon chat anymore. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't figure out a way to like basically resolve it, and I just decided Dude, I didn't care enough. We, this is a slime chunk. This big ass slime. Just, yeah, just yeah, right yeah, in front yeah. Of me. Yeah, and, I've and had they that happen, down yeah. Hole. I, I'm assuming they they won't spawn on farmland, so I guess it's fine. But yeah, I've had a few few slimes in my face. I to, oh man, there's so many. Luckily, I left a lot of blocks lying on the ground because. There's no good way up here without a a pick. So did y'all decide to do a uh, a Halloween party? I don't know yet. So Julia is very determined to throw a party for me for my birthday, even though my birthday has already you know come and gone at this point a couple days ago. She really <laughs> wanted to throw one on my birthday, but she was flying out of town at like 6 p.m. to go to this conference, and I she was like, oh, so do an afternoon birthday, and I'm like, I really don't need to do one of those. And now she's determined to have one this weekend. And I'm saying I don't want to have one this weekend because next next week on Wednesday I have to I have to fly out to Alabama and deliver my DNP presentation to like finalize my degree. It's like the culmination of my degree. And I was like, I'd rather just focus on making sure that presentation is all up to date and ready to go. But she's determined to have one this weekend, and I'm trying to tell her, <laughs> let's just have a freaking party over Halloween when I'm done with everything, so I can relax and enjoy it. But uh, I don't I don't know why she's so determined. <laughs> She's a very stubborn, stubborn, stubborn person. Oh. I have. I. I mean, how dare you say that about my wife? Is accurate. <laughs> oh, <to me>. yeah, <laughs> <it's different. laughs> Oops. Uh. So I'm hoping to have a Halloween party as opposed to a party this weekend because I really do not want to have a party this weekend. This weekend I want to mm-hmm. do what I want to do, make sure I'm finalized and ready to go for next week. And after next week, then you can throw whatever freaking parties you want because I'll be done. <laughs> Also, whenever you were talking about her being determined to do this, I just kind of was having flashbacks of, let's go to a strip club. <laughs> I think she was just trying to make sure everybody liked her and she fit in and she didn't realize how crazy person she made herself sound. <laughs> <laughs> it was fantastic. Uh, and somehow we ended up at some Russian tea house. Yeah, that was the weirdest place I've ever drank at in my I, life. I don't think I've ever seen or heard of that place since. Like, I, I, I think it's one of those places that literally existed or vanished out of thin air for us and then disappeared. <laughs> it only existed in that time and place. Because, like, I mean, how would you not hear about the random bar that's like a Russian tea house? Yeah. And like during the day, it looked like like during the day, that's what it was. It was like a place for little girls to go, and then at night it tra- transformed. And like, what the fuck were they playing on the TVs? I it was like, don't. It was the weirdest experience I've ever had, and I don't even remember what kind of drinks they had there. But it was, yeah, I don't remember what we drank at all. It wasn't Russian how tea we, there. How did we even find that place? Was it like we walked around the corner and the guy who sells like genie lamps told us about this place he had heard? Of? Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't remember how we ended up in there either. It was. After we didn't go to a strip club, that's all I really remember. It's the weirdest place ever. I, I, th- I, I, well, and I like them anyway. You probably would have rather gone to a strip club. <laughs> like, no. I guess it was, I guess it was entertaining because it was so weird and different. Yeah, no, I enjoyed that place. Was... Oh, my opinion, there's nothing wrong with a good strip club though. So, <laughs> especially the ones that I've never the been to a strip club. Steak so. dinner. I don't know how you in your life you've never been to a strip club. Like it doesn't yourself, appeal but... to me. The well, whole I, I get that, but just from the experience of 
You know, I've been to so many strip clubs in downtown Flint, Michigan, that it's just like, I want to go to more just because I want to see how different they all are. You know, not because I'm really interested in like the strippers and what happens, but they're such weird, interesting places. It just feels like, I don't know. It feels it feels like you're almost like abusing yourself to even be there. Oh, I mean, you really are paying money to get yourself like blue balls, essentially. Or you pay yeah. more money to get those blue balls released, but you don't know what else you walk out of there with. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I'll ever. I don't think I ever go to a strip club. I, I can't see myself ever going to a strip club. I'm, I'm fine with this. I just think it's one of those things you have to experience at least once. So city. how's the steak dinners there? Like I, said, I've never I, actually had the steak dinner, but I did partake in one of the strip clubs that had this random free buffet. Yeah, um, I've heard they have buffets. That seems yeah, like that seems was, like the last fucking place I want to eat a buffet. And this one was funny because it was the first strip club I ever went to in D.C. And granted, I've only been to like two in D.C. Um, like I've only been twice to strip clubs in D.C. I should say I mean, it's not like I've only been to two and I go to them all the time. Like I've been to strip clubs <laughs> very rarely in D.C. But this place was uh, my, the, my nursing school uh, colleagues took me there when I was in nursing school for my birthday. They were like, Jeff, let's go. We're taking you to the strip club. Because there was one down the street from uh, from Georgetown. Like, you could walk to it from my house. So they took me there. And it was a, me and a bunch of girls that went into the strip club. And they randomly had this buffet set up in the back that had, like, you know, you know, a veggie platter with, like, the broccoli and the carrots and the celery and the ranch dip. And they had, like deviled eggs or something and like these little ham chunklets that you could put on like crackers chunklets. And it was the weirdest <laughs> the weirdest spread in the world and it was literally just like there at the strip club it was it was mm, i'm getting a plate of food look there's naked people see <laughs> like so fucking the, weird and the girls were going to the bathroom and apparently the bathroom like the ladies bathroom was the shared stripping uh our strippers like changing room so my friend came out and she's like, oh, I just had a conversation with, you know, Candy or whatever the hell her name is. Like, I saw her back there in the changing room getting ready for her next show or her next act. It's so fucking weird. Was there anything on the, because I mean, you basically just described finger food. That's not like, not it was, it was, food. it was finger. This was just a finger food buffet. There wasn't like sandwiches or, you know, anything okay. like that. But there was enough finger foods to make a meal out of. It's not like it was, you know. Uh, were there people like just I mean were people chowing down or was oh, there's there... a, there a couple people chowing down sure I just oh. remember this place being weird because I'd only been to strip clubs in like uh, in Michigan and Ontario before this and in Michigan there's a rule where you have to if you serve alcohol you can only be topless you can't be fully nude okay so if you don't serve alcohol is the only fully nude places so like deja vu is a fully nude strip club but they don't serve alcohol and part of the great things in michigan about the strip clubs especially in flint is some of the strip clubs have the best beer prices like it'll be like two dollar pitchers at this strip club but you pay a five dollar that's what i was about to ask is it like a, like a casino where the yeah. alcohol gets super cheap well but then you come out to dc and it's like free admission but every bottle of beer costs you eight dollars everybody's Jesus. naked they're on stages and you literally the way you pay the strippers or go see the strippers dance like the otherwise then from your seat you go up there and you stand in front of the stage and there's a bouncer who like stands next to you and watches you and you're not allowed to do anything except stand there and after about 15 seconds he's like okay next and that's this you're signed to deliver the money from your hand onto the stage and walk away wow yeah. i thought you put the money in the g-string uh not in dc you don't not at last strip club in dc you don't at least Huh. Wow. Yeah. Whereas in Flint, you literally roll up a dollar bill, put it in your mouth, lay on stage, and the girl comes and gets it from you in whatever way that they're going to come get it from you. Huh. That seems like it's probably more lucrative for, for them as well. In D.C. or in Flint? In, in Flint. Uh, I mean, it's uh, probably better for the strippers. I don't know. In, people in D.C. probably have more money, so they're going to spend more money without uh, making you do that's anything. That's true. Whereas in Flint, people are like, you know... Give me your five dollars. This was gonna feed my family for the next two weeks because Flint is You're right. Down, you know, <laughs> the strip club offers fresh water. <laughs> yeah, the strip club's the only place you can get lead free water. Uh, mm. Well, I think that's a good stopping point. <laughs> uh, thanks for watching, everybody. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time.